Hey guys, Sean Bardo here with another tale from the gear shop. Today, we're at Sea Gear Marine and we're going to talk about pumps. Now, we sell a lot of pumps here. Um, a lot of small pumps, a lot of big pumps. Uh, this today is a Pacer S Series. This is one of our top selling pumps. Uh, it's just what, basically a wash down pump for a commercial fishing boat. You can use them for all types of things. They pump around 120, 130 gallons a minute, so they do move some water. But occasionally the seals go bad, whether they got run dry or just wore out. So today we're going to show you how to replace a seal. Now I've basically taken this thing apart. Um, most pumps are pretty simple. There's usually only three or four parts. You have an impeller, a uh, volute in some cases, and then your housing. Um, real simple. This is our housing. It has your ports in it. You know, you're in, you're out. Um, so we're going to take that off. I've already loosened this up. Now this pump has what's called a volute. Now this is where your pressure is built. You know, your water is going in here. This is a volute check. This is just a check valve to keep the water from going back out. So that's your volute check. This is your volute. This is where the water is swirling around. Um, it goes here against your, your, um, your impeller goes here against your volute. You know, it builds all the pressure in here and then sends the water where it needs to go. And then you have your impeller, your impeller, like a propeller, you know, it's got blades on it. It spins. So again, we've disassembled this whole thing because we got to get down to the seal. Now the seal is down here. Half the seal is actually in the impeller and the other part is in the housing. So we're just going to replace this today, replace all the O-rings and rubber parts because we get these nice handy dandy rebuild kits from Pacer. Comes with your seal, your O-rings, new hardware, uh, just stuff that you can replace. And we're also going to change out the volute check because that one seems pretty worn out. We're going to give it a little bit new life. So I've unbolted this from the motor and we're going to pick it off. The motor, I took some emery cloth and I just cleaned up the shaft, made sure it spins free. You don't hear any noises like bearings going bad. Um, told by the customer the motor worked fine. So we're just going to assume that's in proper working condition and we're going to bang out the old seal. So I'll just take a screwdriver of some type and knock her on out. So and this are your seals so the seal like it does it seals you got these these two pieces you know sitting there on the uh on your impeller and on the shaft and it keeps the water from leaking out where this one you can see there's score marks there's burns i mean it's not in horrible condition but it was leaking you can always tell as well from the pile of salt that's going to be underneath it or the you know the the brown mark there from the rusty water so we've got it completely disassembled so now we're going to put it back together and in that step we're going to put the seal back in here the new seal in there we'll bolt this down to the motor throw the loop back on the check and the housing it's pretty simple it's just you have to do it in a certain type of order so this is what we're going to do so with the seal I like to put on a pair of gloves because the seal, you don't want to get any oils or anything on it. If you do happen to touch it, a little bit of soapy water, you, know, you just want to keep it free from any contaminants. So we've got everything out. If for some reason there's a bunch of gunk in around there, just clean it out. You, know, you want to get it back to as new condition as possible. Man, glad I'm not a doctor. Okay, so take your ceramic part of the seal and press it in like so. Again, if it doesn't go in smooth, these ones are pretty easy. A little bit of soapy water around the outside. And then we're going to take the interior seal, the one that goes in the housing. We're going to place it down there. Now, there's a trick to this. Like any seal, you don't want to just hit one side than the other because you need it to seat right. So I use a nipple. There's a piece of pipe, inch and a half on this one. It just fits perfect on the outside. You don't want to hit the black part. There's a couple taps inspect it make sure there's no gaps or anything everything looks beautiful so that's our seal so that's pretty straightforward this is the back housing back on the the motor and then we will throw the keyway and the impeller put that on and then we'll put the volute then the housing um the only thing with the housing when we go to do it there's this o-ring on here so we do the o-ring and we put the housing on but when you do the housing it's very critical a lot of people have the uh the idea that you should do it like a tire and do a star pattern it's a bad misconception if you do it like that you can actually squeeze the o-ring out 
and make a place to leak. So whenever you do one of these, start at one point and work away, work your way around clockwise, counterclockwise, doesn't matter. Just start somewhere and work all the way around to get it proper. And again, this is a plastic pump or poly pump. You don't want to super tighten it. Um, snug. So I actually use an old ratchet wrench. This thing actually has a little bit of give to it, like where you, you go to tighten it, it slips a little bit. I like it because I can't over tighten things. It's a, a piece of equipment that doesn't work right, but it does for this application. So um, this is part of the video. I'm going to put it back together. We're going to speed it up a little bit so you can see how it actually goes. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video and I'll catch you at the end of it. So at this point, um, we've got the volute on, the impeller's on, the housing's attached to the motor. I'm taking the impeller and turning it to make sure it's not rubbing on anything. Sounds like it's pretty free and clear. New volute check, slides right on, and then the housing. Okay, so our pump's back together. It's in working order. Uh, there is a base plate kit that comes with this pump. I have it sitting right here. Um, I found a little trick to this. There's these two bolts that slide into here, and then you have a clamp, and the motor itself sits in a saddle. So I get these um, pretty much just about snug when I put them on. You don't want them super loose. The washer slides up in there. So if you get them pretty snug, you don't have to tighten them up afterwards because the clamp will do the rest of the work. Get it on there. It's just finger tight. And with the clamp, now this is a used pump. So the clamp's already bent where it's supposed to be. But I like when I finish these pumps or if I build one from scratch, I like the clamp to end up down here so it's not hanging out. You don't catch your leg on it walking through the engine room or wherever you're mounting this thing. So the saddle just slides into the housing or the, the rack. So like I said, this one's already pre-bent. So we'll see where she ends up, whoever put this one together. Nice and tight. And there we have it. Rebuilt, resealed S-series washdown pump from Pacer. Um, said need a new one come on in need the old one fixed come talk to us or you can buy the parts and do it yourself now so again sea gear marine give us a like give us a share thanks for paying attention on this one have a great day sean bardo sea gear marine